wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, I should have said that. Said. Damn. Yeah. Welcome back to Life Lessons in Film. And today we will be making sense of life through Snowpiercer. Yeah. First Bong Joon-ho movie I saw. And it blew my mind. Not this time. No, no. In no, the no. past, this right? Because this was the time, second thing that you watched. I think it was the third time, yeah. Yeah. It was the second time for me. Yeah. Oh. No, the movie. Basically, uh, global warming gets to the point where they gotta take some extreme measures, and they shoot this chemical in the air, freezes the whole earth way too much, kind of has the opposite effect. Everything dies off, except for this train that they built as like a contingency plan that just keep, manages to keep going around the whole earth, and they manage to get a couple humans onto it before everything freezes over. But because the structures that were in place while that was happening kind of maintain themselves as the People got on the train, so it's it's a, the train is a nice metaphor for how the world is, uh, the modern world is shaped up to be. So in the back of the back of the train, you've got just the, the unwashed masses, those that in poverty, unemployed. They 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 just they they they're, they're just there. As you go up the train, there's all these different sectors like those that um, produce the food to feed those in the back of the train. It's just chucking in bugs into a big big uh, churner and send out them protein bars <laughs> and uh, they got like uh, places where they have aquariums and they got to keep the ecosystem in balance so they can make sushi twice a year and then yeah as you go up people are just living more and more lavish extravagant and lavish yeah some people are just getting blitzed at a club part of the train like the whole time that's their existence every day every day day to day yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's a there's a school uh, part of the for kids part of the train where they take a few kids um, up from, well, no, the kids that they sometimes take from the back of the train, they're actually used to work the uh, the engine at the front of the train. But the other kids are just parts of certain elite parts of the of the train, and they get educated there. They and, actually yeah. get an education, whereas yeah. the kids at the, the back, the back. <laughs> just have to <laughs> no school. learn how to scrounge. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just living on a lot of bunk beds and squalor. And then it follows as uh, several of them at the back of the bus are getting these messages from this person they feel like is on their side, pushing them to, to revolt. And they make a move, and then they manage to actually start making their way to the front of the train and seeing just how the train system is set up. And, uh, yeah, it's based off a graphic novel, I think, but, uh, I, I, I haven't read it, but I feel like the, the movie at least did that justice, if not just transcended. So many great characters, so many great moments. One of my favorites is Gilliam, played by John Hurt, mainly because it's just John Hurt. But also, it's a very cool character because the backstory is that you find out that the main character is, is friends with this old man, Gilliam, because the old man, Gilliam, stopped the main character, Chris Evans' character, um, from eating a baby because they got to the point where they were eating babies. <laughs> yeah, and it was taste, bad. It was bad because they didn't have food for those at the back of the train at the beginning. So they just started eating just each started other. Just started eating each other. Babies apparently are delicious. Yeah, so, they tasted better. <laughs> yeah, they tasted better. I don't know if they're delicious, but they yeah. tasted better. Yeah. And Gilliam decides to cut off one of his arms to yeah. stop them. He's if like, you're hungry, eat this. Why don't you just eat me? Leave the baby, please. Come yeah. on, let's have a little. And then they just that snap them back into. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. We don't. Do this, do yeah, we? Yeah, this is this, this is, is this not... is a new, this is a new thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Understandably, that that act of kindness uh, created a lot of respect uh, for Gilliam, for probably everyone in the back of the train. But turns out Gilliam is also in cahoots. Yeah. Yeah. Big plot twist. Great plot, plot twist, twist in that movie. Yeah, fantastic. And and yeah, he was in cahoots the whole time with Ed Harris, who is the 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 one running the train. Well, not running the train. Yeah. What Ed do they Ed call him again? Oh, the. <laughs> Wal Waldo? It's a big W. Yeah, I don't remember. Waldo or something. <laughs> Not Waldo. Well, <laughs> the whole time they're like, where is Waldo? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's like a w Wimerson or something. Yeah. Wilfred. Wilfred, Wilfred yeah. yeah. So Gilliam, I really like because there's that, uh, it's, it's, I don't know, he's a complicated character because I think he genuinely is a good person. I think, you know, you could be an informant for the front, the, the those in power and control um, to, I mean, to kind of was he it. an inf was he an informant per se? Because an informant mm. suggests that they there were that there were sides, right? But with Ed Harris and Gilliam, who was the what's Ed Harris's name? They're on the same yeah. they're on the same side. Yeah, yeah. It's just that they made like they had different stations. Yeah, that's you know true. I mean? That's true. So it's not like yeah, yeah, Gilliam and Ed Harris both felt like this is just my role in keeping the system going. Yeah. So Gilliam realized that. 
I'm just, I gotta keep Ed at the front knowing what's going on in the back here. And because you find out that to keep the equilibrium of the population of the train, every so often you gotta, you gotta spike, spike, or, um, be a catalyst for revolts to whittle down as the people revolt, and a lot of people get killed in the process, it helps keep the population in balance. Yeah. So Gilliam and Ed, they're talking all the time. I don't know how exactly, on the phone or something. They got some kind of phones they're able to communicate with, and they're talking all the time. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, yeah, so really they just look at it as, well, this is just my my part to play. In yeah, this. so the whole point is that everybody has a role to play. Yeah. So that the train is set up in that with that mindset. Mm-hmm. Even the pe- the people that are struggling the most that have to eat the babies, yeah. they had to eat the babies yeah. um, in order for the system to be maintained. Yeah. So basically, there ca- there cannot be any pain, any success, or longevity, or continuity of life of humanity without certain sacrifices, and some of those sacrifices include. Eating babies. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Nurturing certain situations where there would be a revolt and you mm-hmm. want this because then it gets, you're allowed to, yeah. well, you, it, it helps you kill people off. Yeah. Basically, yeah. which you'll need to do because people keep having kids. Yes. And then you have to keep a certain level of a popu- the population yeah. at a certain level. Yeah. In order for the, for the train to. Yeah. yeah. And, and it also, I think, creates that it maintains um, a certain strength to the train system because there's that natural push to revolt when you're at the back of the train or just at the bottom of the barrel or bottom of the, you know? Yeah. Um, so you have to keep, there's that little bit of hope that keeps them going, believing, oh, like there's a chance. It's not because they're, they ke- are kept unaware that this is just part like, oh, it's time to do another revolt. They yeah. think this time it's, 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 it's going to work. It's going to work, you know? Yeah. So you exactly. keep you, you keep people believing. Yeah. You know. The train for us, honestly, we talked about it, and I feel like a lot of people probably feel this way. The the train is just a metaphor for the world, mm-hmm. and the only question is, do you agree with the things that you saw in yeah. the movie? Yeah. Right? Do you agree, for example, that government? Right? Mm-hmm. Because in this in this situation, Gilliam, Gilli- is it Gilliam? Yeah. Or Gillum? It's Gilliam. And and Ed Harris, yeah. uh, Wilfred, yeah. they are government. Yeah, honestly, like yeah. even though Gillum is out there, you know, living with the with the people, yeah. you know, with the commoners, yeah, he's still government, mm-hmm. right? Because it's strategy. Yeah, and someone has to be stationed somewhere. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like if you have uh, like the diplomatic corps, someone is going to be stationed in like you know this fancy country, and then someone is going to be fa- stationed somewhere where it's kind of really tough, where life isn't really easy and, you know, there's no water or all these kinds of things. Yeah. That's part of life. But yeah. they're on the same team. Yeah. And they're earning the same salary at the end of the day. So I, I so for me, this was really a, a metaphor for life. Mm-hmm. And yeah, and I think personally, I believe that it was a good depiction yeah. of it. Oh, I, I think uh, the, the great thing about it, I believe, is that it's a pretty easy metaphor to get but it's also like there's, there's 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 so much stuff there that like for instance I like dividing up kind of uh, the sections of people in in our world into the train cars because the train cars are a great way to show a very obvious divide between people. So you have the people that are just getting massaged all the time, getting their hair done, having sushi, or just getting blitzed on party drugs. Yeah. A lot of those people that that live that lifestyle all the time really are cut off from other other portions of the population in a very almost feels like they're just in a totally separate world yeah. and it, and the train really makes it feel like these are all separate worlds that people are in there's a lot of people celebrities getting called out for what for being tone deaf mm-hmm. why are celebrities tone deaf because right. they don't live the way that you yeah. do they yeah. don't know yeah. <laughs> these things that you experience and so it's definitely yeah. Yeah. they're not you're not top of mind your yeah. experience isn't top of mind for them yeah you know, and and for for people that get frustrated at Kim Kardashian for renting a private island during COVID, yeah, yeah, I mean, I I feel like it is uh, maybe don't sh- you know maybe do that maybe don't announce it to the world if you you know but at the same time they're living in this world where they'll they'll probably notice oh you you've gotten some hate from people for making that comment but they're so detached from that car that stage car that other people that are upset with her, Kim Kardashian, are living in, 
that they're like they also know the game like they'll blow over there's so many new news stories they know people will be upset yeah. with the progression and then they'll forget to move on to something else and then after you know a dozen news stories They'll be into Kim Kardashian's new product line or new show or whatever. Yeah. So they and it also happens so many happens times all the time. So so they know um, that they uh, you can generally kind of these are the parameters of whatever car whatever train section you find yourself in. These are kind of the parameters that you can kind of do things operate within. Yeah, and you know? even when celebrities do try to qualify their conduct, they never get it right. Like because they don't actually understand the thing, the context for which they have to qualify their actions, right? So if you're talking about things like, okay, well, I'm going on this trip, but we are fully vaxxed. We made sure mm. everybody got fully vaxxed. Still, yeah. not enough. Yeah. Because you're not re you're not reflecting on the fact that fully vaxxed, vaxxed or not, millions of people, pe yeah. billions of people yeah. could not afford yeah. to go on an island. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Billions of people lost their jobs mm -hmm. because of COVID. Yeah. So they couldn't even save up yeah. to go on a holiday. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So that person, she doesn't understand that yeah. whatsoever. Yeah. You know? Um, so that is the reality. And so in this train, you have people like that. They have no mm -hmm. context. They have no sensitivity yeah. at all yeah. for the people in there. Even the kids, yeah. even the kids that were getting, the privileged kids that were getting an education yeah. when the um, the people at the back are trying to now break out and yeah. go towards the front of the train to find Wilfred, they see these people as scum and they mm -hmm. feel like, no, they do belong at the end mm -hmm. of the train. They don't believe, they don't belong here mm -hmm. with us. They also are kind of restricted in their own way you know yeah they're the ones that actually get an education but it's a very restricted education because it's only within certain parameters that they're allowed meaning that they're completely ignorant of how other people are living which i think also restricts their awareness of the world right yeah. and and that happens right you have people and that, of course that that serves the whole yeah the government yeah. on it the train the mm -hmm. government and the train yeah. it serves the purpose mm -hmm. of yeah. yeah, they need, yeah. you know, like privileged people mm -hmm. need to have a certain mindset yeah. just as people that are underprivileged need to have a certain mindset because that, you know, that's how you balance, keep things yeah. balanced, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, now the whole thing at the, the end of the movie basically is, you know, Ed Harris is aware of generally the big picture and he, said, he talks to the main character saying like, you know, you're, you've actually seen more of the train than anyone else. You've seen more of the train than I have. Right? So in some ways you have like the biggest picture now, and this is the thing, is he's been given, he grew up at the back of the car, at the back of the train, and he decided to end it. He said, this is, this is crazy that we've just perpetuate the same kind of sick cycle of everyone just being so s stuck in this myopic, you know, situation that they're just kind of born into. Um, and he's like, I'm going to, I'm going to end it. I'm just going to stop stop the train entirely, right? Now you, you could maybe, you know, the great thing about that movie is, Ed Harris is acting like just a pretty decent. He's like, why don't we hang out for a bit? I, I get lonely up here, you know. You you, yeah. you think you trade it's places good to with have me? Company. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like, hey, at least because uh, Ed, uh, the main character, he had community and he had family at the back of the the train. You know, people looked up to him. They made him a uh, he, he he didn't want it, but he became the leader of them. You know, so he had purpose and he had community and he had friendships, right? And Ed yeah. Harris is just alone on the on the front of the train, so. In, in, in Ed Harris's mind, that's where he feels like, sure, I'm advantaged in some ways. I get steak, but I'm also alone here all the time. Also and also knowing. making decisions, huge yeah. decisions, because yeah. th this movie is just fantastic, really, mm -hmm. because in every single part of this train, everybody thinks they're making the right decision yeah. for humanity, mm -hmm. not just for themselves. People here yeah. or in leadership positions mm -hmm. believe, right? All of the leaders believe that we are making the right decisions for humanity. Mm -hmm. We are acting self selflessly, right? Yeah. Because this guy here with his stake, he wants to hang out with the folks, right? Mm -hmm. And he thinks, okay, well, at the back of the train, everybody loves each other, there's family, mm -hmm. and they spend time together, and I'm here on, on my own trying to figure out how to keep humanity yeah. alive. Stressful job. Mm -hmm. Is Ed Harris also in his own kind of, you know, narrow-minded worldview where he just thinks, oh, well, this is the only way to do things, and really, again, I'm acting selflessly to maybe avoid all the, because he knows about more of how the train operates than most people, to avoid just living in, crushing guilt 
and, and other depression and other things that could come with knowing the things that he causes, like, all right, time to start another revolt and knowing how many people get killed because of a call that you make, is, is that also in a way him just being very narrow-minded in, in believing that that is his purpose and it's, it's righteous to do that because that, that allows him to actually keep doing it blindly without maybe questioning Maybe, uh, maybe this is really messed up, right? And now yeah. you come from the back of the train and all you can think about is survival. All you can think about is one day we're going to break out of this. Yeah. Not really knowing kind of why your position is the way it is to begin with. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there's so many things in this movie, yeah. honestly. Not understanding yeah. your position, right? Leadership is like that. A lot yeah. of leaders truly, they have this notion of what it means to be a leader and what it is, what it means to to serve people just justly mm -hmm. and what it means to do things, to act for the greater good. I mean, who is to say that any kind of way of doing things is correct yeah. at the end of the day? Yeah. But you do see a lot of that. You, ha you tend to see a, a lot of these structures being put into place in the world that we live mm -hmm. in with the notion that, okay, well, this is going to work, right? Mm -hmm. The leaders in the, sh in the train are thinking, we need to keep this train going so that we keep the humanity going, mm -hmm. right? But in the end... What what is that really yeah. a good thing anyway yeah. to exactly. keep humanity going, yeah. especially to keep humanity going in that way? Yeah, I don't believe anyone should have the 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 feeling that they can play God because again, we're all, all even if you are Chris Evans and you made it from the back of the train to the front of the train, you've seen everything. Is that still even enough knowledge of kind of the structure of, of human society to know? that you enough to feel like you could play God. I don't know. I yeah. really don't know. I don't think so. The train, yeah. balance, right? Yeah. And you need janitors, you need mm -hmm. people who pick up yeah. uh, like... Uh, uh, electricians, you, yeah. plumbers. Yeah, you need these yeah. people that the world kind of looks down on, which yeah. is awful, yeah. right? But you need these. And then that's where, for example, immigrants, right? You have a lot of governments where Western societies, the more that they, they develop, the less people are inclined from these societies to work these more mm -hmm. like labor intensive jobs. Yeah. That's when you have to open up the doors yeah. to people from countries where things are really super rough yeah. because you know these people will take absolutely anything. Yeah. But that is, you know, an example of this thing with yeah. that you do need people in these kinds of positions. And, you know, sometimes you force people into those positions and you, if you can, you find people who are desperate yeah. enough to get themselves into those positions. Yeah. And that's the way of the world. The train is exactly like yes. that. That's, these are the things that came up for yeah. us, you yeah. know, when it came to the train. Yeah. One thing as well that I was, I remember we talked about is, you know, the lavish, the people that were living in, lavishly, mm -hmm. right, in this, in this train, who had absolutely no knowledge of what was going on mm -hmm. at the back of the train or interest. Let's say, for example, if you knew that you could help someone in a disadvantaged community in your own country because it's not even just countries like in the developing world mm. um, that are struggling. There are people in your own country, if you're coming from the West, that are struggling a lot. And if you knew that you could help this, some, just even one person from your country who was at a complete disadvantage, mm. if you stopped Netflix and you decided <laughs> you're never gonna watch 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 Netflix ever yeah. again, and you you decided that I'm I'm gonna get rid of my iPhone. Yeah. If you if would you would you exactly, yeah. would you stop watching Netflix? Yeah. These are your comforts. Yeah. Yeah. You have gotten used to these things, mm -hmm. and also how are you gonna order an Uber without a phone? <laughs> yeah. You know yeah. the world that you live in. Mm -hmm. Even if you wanted to fight it, the world you live in forces you mm -hmm. to need these contraptions. For example that might actually save someone else if you weren't using them. For example, I'm gonna go deep here, right? Coltan, if you yeah. didn't know where this product, and you better not cut this, um, just so, because I think it's important, yeah. you know, like, and I and, and I say this not because I'm not even righteous here, because I also have a phone, yeah. and these are things that I think yeah. of every day. Yeah. Coltan is a big uh, resource that we that we use yeah. for electronic um, yeah. it's almost, it's devices. Like, yeah. it's almost in everything, especially phones, yeah. right? And where do you get it? We get it in the Democratic yep. Republic of Congo. Yep. And let me tell you, there are kids, yep. there are people dying for your phone. A lot of countries have a stake in the resources there. The people that are actually living in the Kivus do not actually gain whatsoever from the resources, but we do. Yep. Because I get my iPhone, all these contraptions that yep. make my life so much better. Yep. And when I'm lost, I get to GPS, you know, Mr. Google helps me find, Dr. Google helps me find where I need to go. And so then I have to grapple with, what would I do like without these things, yeah. right? 
Have you ever gone just like a day without your phone? Let's say you left your phone behind. How are you getting around? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Things like that. Yeah. How are you going to be like on your social media? How are you going to know what's going on <laughs> yeah. on Instagram? How are you going to keep yeah. up to date? Yeah. And these aren't, I'm not even saying this because like, I'm not, it's not even a ditzy move to say, how are you going to keep up to date? What's going on in, on Instagram? Honestly, like the world is just set up that way. Yeah. You have to just be up to date with these kinds of things that in the past would seem superficial. Mm -hmm. Even where you might want to make a change, even where you might want to stop watching Netflix, or even what, where you want to get rid of your all your de technolog technological mm -hmm. devices so that you can help people yeah. at the back of the train, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're gonna struggle. Yeah. So yeah, because your life dictates that you have these things. Yeah even though it means that someone else is suffering and, and for it. People also struggle with, even if you are aware of the damages of technology that we have on the rest of the world, you go from being, wow, I, you know, this, instead of buying this, this device, this contraption, that doesn't even really make me that happy or help my life in some ways certain that much. But at the same time, you go from being like, you know, if I didn't get the next one, maybe it would help uh, somewhere in the other part of the world. But then you can switch to, to then your 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 the other side of your brain where you're like, ooh, but that new phone does look pretty good. And like you look at your friends and like, oh, they're all getting new phones. I've had this phone for years, you know? Yeah. It's, so yeah. yeah it's, and it's hard. Yeah. We're not here trying to make it seem like, yeah. you know, oh my God, if you no. do that, you're the, the worst person. The world kind you of are is, socialized. We are conditioned. Kind of, the world is kind of the way it is because it's the way it is. Yeah. Meaning that uh our condition has been conditioned. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Literally after watching this movie we were talking about this same conversation yeah. the entire night. <laughs> yeah. Honestly. Losing sleep because we watched the movie too. Yeah. Right? yeah. You know, for me, there are two, the two things I would say uh, were creating a revolution, mm -hmm. um, giving something people to, uh, giving people purpose. Yeah. You know. A little bit of hope even, to keep them yeah, going. Yeah, to keep them yeah. going. And that happens. There's yeah. so many things. But then, and then you're just faced with the thing when, when you see these things is, what do you even do? Because it's very tough because then you find yourself talking to other people that are kind of born into the same train carriage that you were because the same reference points. They kind of understand wh where you got the information from, how you see things, mm -hmm. si similar points of view, right? So then you're kind of stuck. It's hard to kind of move from different train sections in life. Yeah. Um, for many reasons. I think humans just generally... Uh, get stressed when they're around people they're not so comfortable knowing the steps of the the proper ways of communicating because everyone has their certain ways right different stage coaches have different ways of of even just hanging out and shooting the the shoot yeah with people so it's hard to get past the just uh getting to know people then you know really engaging with certain things so yeah, yeah. the other thing that i i, I want to talk about that i don't want to forget is you, which I think was the biggest metaphor for me in the movie. You know how the people in the back of the train are fighting to get to the front of the train because they think, okay, we're going to change it. Every, every, everybody's going to be equal, mm -hmm. you know? Or, and, and, it's, and it's not even people in the back of the train, right? It's everybody who is not a leader. Mm -hmm. But especially people in the back of the train, it's kind of like you, you're existing in this world, but you don't understand the rules mm -hmm. of the world. So I think... It spoke to, for me, how you would have uh, people that are less privileged, right? People that are less privileged aren't accommodated in a lot of ways because they don't have access to the same kind of resources that some, one, someone in a more privileged, privileged position has. They don't understand the world and they don't know how to navigate it as well as you do, which means that their chances of surviving in um, the world and actually finding comfort, a, com a nice little, you know, I don't know. Life. Yeah, a nice little chunk of life is like really like very minimal, mm -hmm. you know? I don't know how to explain this, but it's kind of like people who are privileged know where the knives are. The world is created for them. And people in the back of the train, the world isn't really created for them. And so they're moving along, trudging on along, trying to figure out, how I want better because it's uncomfortable at the back of the mm -hmm. train. And you know that it's uncomfortable mm -hmm. and you're fighting for your life as people who are struggling in the world right now do. Like working hard jobs where you're getting paid nothing. You're working your butt off because that's the only thing that you've been mm -hmm. trained to, or like the only skill you've been given mm -hmm. because you, you know, you didn't have access to the kind of education or opportunities that might help you 
get to where you want to do. So you then you're just stuck doing this job and working for like 40 hours a day. Okay, I know, you know, and just not getting anywhere. The thing with the train is like, yeah, when they, um, Chris Evans' character, he starts, obviously he's a very, uh, he's obviously primed mm -hmm. for leadership. These guys have already seen, picked this guy yeah. and seen that this is the one he's going to take yeah. over when we die. He's different from everybody. They just don't realize how different he is, <laughs> right? Even, you know, but... Everybody else, like even him, when he starts out, he has this idea of the the world that he lives in. He thinks it's a certain way and all you have to do is get to the front of the train, get the guy, kill him or whatever, you know? Yeah. He gets to the part of the train, that you know, to the front of the train and he actually learns that things are completely yeah. and utterly different from what he yeah. thought and that whatever his vision of what was supposed, what would be better is completely unachievable. Mm -hmm. yeah. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, mm -hmm. right? And so that's the thing. We're all living like that and we don't always have the opportunity like Chris Evans to finally realize that yeah. the way we're living, it's just an illusion at the mm -hmm. end of the day or we have no clue yeah. what rules we're living in or what world we're living in. Yeah. We're completely blind to our reality. Yeah. yeah. And mm -hmm. it's especially the case when you are someone who's struggling and coming from a disadvantaged community and you're seeing people around you, yeah. you know, happy, living happily or yeah. succeeding or finding yeah. ways to get that job. How did they get that job? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Which is why I would say safest thing, not even safest, the truest thing to do in life is to realize that everyone only has had so much experience. You know, you're lucky if you've come from one train car and managed to actually experience a couple other train cars, give yourself a little bit of perspective. But everyone's coming from their main train car. And so everyone's going to have blinders on to certain things. Meaning that some people will just be ignorant to certain other people's how certain jobs work. Or how certain other people live. Or other certain mindsets that people get from certain things. So that's why, you know, your, your perspective is only ever going to be so grand. And so long with including so many train cars of people. Yeah. So that's why I feel like you can, you can increase your happiness a little bit or, or contentment with people, uh, like it or not, there's billions of people, people are going to be interacting with you throughout life. Um, so just realizing that everyone's kind of got a bit of the blinders on and forgiving yourself and others for just that fact. Yeah. I'll wake up in the middle of the night. Oh, I should have said that. Said. Damn. Yeah. Everything was about it was fantastic. Very happy yeah. to have seen that. Yeah. It yeah. And it's funny because at we first. We enjoyed it. We did. <laughs> <laughs> we come from a certain train car where we find putting on posh British accents is hilarious. And it is. I'm not sure which train car that is, but it's a good yeah, train car. Yeah, it's a good <laughs> train car. <laughs> With yeah. that, we are signing off. Right. Wait, what do we usually say? Uh, we say signing off. I say signing off. That's, signing a off. that's a wrap. You always say that. No, of course, say that. Yeah. I was just saying that before you said that's a wrap. Okay, okay. okay. well, we could add, say both of them. Yeah, so we're signing that. off. And uh, that's what. What do you guys think of Snowpiercer? Did you pick up on on some of those things? Maybe you have other things that you noticed in the movie. Yeah, sure please. There's a lot of stuff in there. Come on, let us know. Let us know. Comment. Please. Please. We want just to something. discuss. Even what, just what, even what, if you just what? type in first. Yeah, I'd actually like to discuss. I like we like discussing movie this way, Clearly. and we only have each other, which is great. Very yeah. grateful yeah. to have that. To be honest, yeah. um, um, yes. but. We're interested to know, like, are there other people like us yeah. who discuss movies like this? Out in the cyberspace, I'm sure. <laughs> there, are, there are more of us than you realize. So, right. we'll be signing off. Till next time, that's a wrap.